Hell Ocean, my friends, the Heinz Honey and Almond Cream Program. Go for crazy! 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 Starring George Burns and Heinz Honey, Gracie Allen with Frank Parker, Ray Noble, and his orchestra, and Truman Bradley speaking. A hundred million strong, that's right, you can't go wrong. Go for crazy! She's holding all day long. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. How's your campaign coming along? Oh, fine. Only I've been getting a little impatient with Congress. Impatient with Congress? Yeah, where did they come off passing a law that you can only spend $3 million for your campaign fund? Oh, yes. I saw that on the front page this morning. Did you see the second page? Uh Uh-huh. How did Dick Tracy make out? He escaped again. Oh, (laughs) good. $3 million for a campaign fund. But where can you go on that? Why, they spend more than that to run the government. Chrissy, stop worrying. The Republicans and the Democrats are limited to $3 million, too. Yeah, but does Jim Farley have to spend $17 for a permanent? Well, I, I wouldn't know. And does Mr. Garner have to pay $10 for a snood? Well, you've got me, you've got uh, me. And does John L. Lewis have to spend $3 to have his eyebrows plucked? Well, you've got me, I really would... Do you know what's wrong with this program? You've got me. You guessed it. <laughs> You were tricked in... I was tricked into... <laughs> well, Three million dollars, Gracie, is enough to run any campaign. Oh, yeah? Why, the last convention I went to, I wasn't even running, and it cost me $10,000 for tips. $10,000 for tips? Well, it was a Shriners convention, and I thought there were red caps. <laughs> well, I'll bet was that... Were their feathers red? <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> and a bad joke, too. <laughs> See, Gracie... Exactly how much money have you got in this campaign fund of yours? Oh, I've been getting checks from all over the country. Really? How much have you got? Oh, let me see now. Eight from Boston, 15 from Chicago. Well, how much have you got all together? And ten from Omaha, 18 from Philadelphia, one from East Philadelphia. How much have you got, Chrissy? Thirty from New York, none from Brooklyn, hmm. and three from Akron. How much have you got? That's... Well, all together, I've got about 190 checks. Well, that's a lot of money. Oh, well, it would even be more if they were signed. <laughs> What what good are unsigned checks? Oh, they'll be signed. They will, huh? Oh, my brother's home working on them right now. (laughs) You haven't got a dime and you're upset about millions. Oh, well, sure I'm upset. The government says that they'll allow you $3 million for a campaign fund, and so far they haven't sent me a nickel. Gracie, I'll explain it. So you'll understand it. Yes. When, When they say that they allow you $3 million, they don't mean that they allow you $3 million. They mean you're allowed to have it if you have three million. Would it be all right, Daddy? <laughs> Quiet, Parker. Hello, Pinky. Hello. Say, Prez, I saw you at the Hollywood ballpark the other day, throwing out the first ball. Oh, did you? Yes, Gracie, yeah. I heard you open the Pacific Coast season. Oh, yeah, when was I excited. Really? There I was with a hamburger in one hand and a baseball in the other, and I didn't know which one to throw. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what'd you do? Oh, what did I do? What could I do? After I'd eaten the baseball, I had to throw out the hamburger. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh... Tell me, was the catcher mad? Oh, was he? He held the game up for 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Well, yes, it's hard to eat a hamburger through a mask. Oh, yes. <laughs> Those things get in your eyes. Yes. Uh, Did you enjoy the game, Frank? Oh, yes, I had a swell seat. Johnny Weissmuller couldn't go, so he gave me his seat. Oh, where was it? Up in the tree. <laughs> Must have been very uncomfortable. No, I was sitting on a bird's nest. Sitting on a bird's nest? Yeah, one of them bit me in the second inning. Mm. <laughs> oh, George. Go, the bird died. Uh, George, there certainly were a lot of celebrities at the ball game. Robert Taylor was in a box, and George Raff was in another box, and I had the box of honor. Box of honor? Yeah, it was full of cracker jacks. Full of cracker jacks. It's the kind that had those little prizes in them. Yes, one had a little tin whistle, and oh, it was delicious. Delicious? You said it. Oh, mm. You can also whistle for your campaign fund, too. Oh, you? don't worry about me. I'll get the three million dollars, even if I have to accept it from strangers. Strangers, eh? Gracie, it's very simple. Just go to one of those loan companies that advertise on the radio. They'll loan you three million, and no questions asked. Oh, well, that's wonderful. I wonder how much interest they'll pay me. Well, my trumpet player is thinking of going down there to get some money. Well, maybe he's maybe he's got collateral. No, he's got asthma, but you can't hear it when he's playing trumpet. <laughs> well, on him it looks good. 
Maybe I can get my campaign money from your fans, George. Three million dollars from my fans? Well, that's not very much. It's only a million dollars apiece. And I thought I had four fans. You lost one. Singing ain't misbehaving, yeah, remember? Sing it again. <laughs> Say, Gracie, I'll tell you how to raise the money for your campaign fund. You know when you use the dollar bottle of Heinz Honey and Almond Cream, you save a lot of money. Uh-huh. So you get 10 million people in your party using it, and at the end of the week, you know what you've got? What? Soft white hands. hands. That's yes. <laughs> I don't know about your party, but it'll certainly keep your hands out of the red. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, George. <laughs> George, did you know that Sally Rand is campaigning for me? Sally Rand? Well, you should have heard her the other night making a speech. She got up and she said, my fans, and you are my fans. Oh, your fans, yes. yes. Well, that covers everything. Well, doesn't it? Gracie. <laughs> I say, Grace, if you went around barefooted, you wouldn't have all these financial troubles. Barefooted? Well, rather. I read where John D. Rockefeller started out as a barefoot boy, and he wound up with hundreds of millions. Yes. But he had a few oil projects on the side. Well, with all that money, he could have gone to a doctor and had them removed. <laughs> Probably wouldn't hurt a bit. Uh, well, anyway, I'm not going to worry about it. If I can't get $3 million for my campaign fund, I'll just have to get along in two and a half million. Yeah, just rough it a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Say, Gracie, when you get to the White House, what are you going to do with your family? Well, my little nephew can stay in the Library of Congress, uh-huh. and my uncle will live at the Smithsonian Institute. Nice place. And, oh, I know my brother will just love the men. Mm. And my sister. Your uncle in the Smithsonian yes. Institute? Yes. And my sister... That's, that's a museum. Well, that'll be a nice change for my uncle. You see, for the past seven years, he's been living in a broom closet. In a, in a broom closet? Yeah, but three years ago, he came out to make a personal appearance on We the People. I see. And went right back into, into the, the broom, broom closet, closet. Yes, yes. yes. You know, a very funny thing happened to me in Washington. I went to a very swanky affair, and I had one of those red, green, and yellow diplomatic sashes across my chest, and they kept calling on me to make a speech. So why didn't you make a speech? Uh, because I'm not a diplomat. Well, then why didn't you take off the sash? I couldn't. It was hauling up my pants. <laughs> yes, and it wouldn't look very nice for a diplomat to be without his portfolio. <laughs> oh, my, uh, my uncle it would. Oh, yes, the one that lived in the room closet. Yeah, yes. with a vacuum cleaner. With a vacuum cleaner? Yeah, he's a Hoover man. Oh, he is. Uh... <laughs> well, can you beat that? They say some of the new Paris dresses have skirts padded with cushions of horsehair. Well, I hope they're not as scratchy as those old-fashioned horsehair sofas. Horsehair furniture feels like chapped sandpapery hands, so rasping and unpleasant to touch. Now, if your hands are rough and chapped this minute, be sure to use Heinz Honey and Almond Cream before you go to bed tonight. Heinz is extra creamy, extra softening, and contains two vitamins, A and B. Every drop of this grand, creamy emulsion helps coax a beautiful smoothness back to your poor chapped hands. Thousands of women who use Heinz regularly boast about having soft, smooth hands in spite of doing their own housework. Heinz is good for children's hands and faces and legs, too. Their tender skin gets chapped so easily, you know, in raw wind. So give their hands the creamy comfort of Heinz the moment they come indoors. You can get Heinz Honey and Almond Cream at the nearest toilet goods counter in 10, 25, 50 cent and dollar sizes. Remember, it's Heinz. Spelled H I N D S, or softer, smoother hands. Now, Frank Parker. Thanks, Drew. Tonight I'm going to sing a song that's an oldie, but a goodie. Back in 1931, Gus Arnheim wrote a beautiful song entitled Sweet and Lovely. Remember it? There's sweetness in the call of the woodland dog as his love song echoes through the trees. There's sweetness in the rose with its symbol of love Floating on a summer breeze But nothing can compare to the sweetness of The one and only one I love Sweet and lovely Sweeter than the rose
muscles in my arms so tenderly. There's a thrill that words cannot express. In my heart, a song of love is haunting me. Melody. That number was for Sam and Edna, for Harriet, Elsie, and Joe, for Mabel, Becky, and Agnes, for little Mickey O'Toole, who'll be two years old next February, and for the girls in the pool room. <laughs> you too can have a new spring outfit like smiling Frankie Parker is wearing. Complete with hat, suit, overcoat, shoes, three pairs of socks, double-breasted undershirt and watch, all for three eighty-five. dollars <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yes, sir. George. Hey, yeah? George. Who's the man Gracie's talking to over there? I don't know. She's probably trying to get $3 million for a campaign fund. Hey, it sounds like that, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Allen, I don't think I'll have any trouble raising it. I've raised it before, and I don't see why I can't do it again. Well, how long do you think it'll take? Well, it all depends on a lot of things. I'll go out and start working on it right oh, now. Oh, good. The sooner you start, the sooner you'll raise it. That's right. Gracie, who's that? The elevator boy. His elevator is stuck in the basement. <laughs> So was your campaign. Say, Gracie, I typed that speech for you. Thanks, Bubbles. But you know, I have a little trouble with the typewriter. Some of the O's are upside down. Uh, what, uh, what speech? And you'll notice, Gracie, I've got farmers in caps. Farmers in caps? Well, I always thought they wore straw hats. <laughs> Look, uh, don't tell me that you're going to make a speech. Just to the farmers. Mm. Dewey and Garner made a speech to the farmers last week. Oh, the copycat. Yeah, they stole the stuff well, they haven't done yet. Now for my speech. Farmers, farmers' wives, and Sammy Cohn. Sammy Cohn? Yeah. Oh, pardon me, it's semicolon. Semicolon. <laughs> <laughs> that little dark fella. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, I'll start again. Farmers, farmers' wives, farmers' sons, farmers' daughters, hired hands, and tractor salesmen. What about the boys in the back room? See what they'll have. Truman, see what they'll have. <laughs> My subject tonight is the care and feeding of farmers and how to cook it. How to cook it? Uh, my opponents have said that they're going to fight me until the cows come home. Oh, so they admit the cows aren't home. Oh, why aren't the, why aren't the cows home? Because they don't like conditions on the farm. The cows are smart. They're not coming home until there's a woman in the White House. I see. Well, how do you think they... Uh, what, I, what I'd like to know is how do you know what the cows think about Bubbles tells me everything. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go right ahead. So, if you farmers want contented cows, have your wives knit each cow a glove. And in that oh, way, my friend... Uh, one glove for each cow. Well, sure. So that when the cow isn't being milked, can, it can keep its fingers warm. <laughs> I, uh, I guess that you, you fingered that out for yourself. Oh, how do you like that, Frank? Cocktails for two. Cocktails for two? Yeah, it's drinks. It does, um. <laughs> so, my friend... Gracie, when you're through, can my drummer have a copy of your speech? He's a farmer, you know. Why well, didn't he listen to it? Oh, he can't right now. He's reading Rebecca. <laughs> well, have her read it out loud. It'll help the farmers more than the speech. Oh, right. So, right. my friend, what the American farm needs is the touch of a woman's hand. Therefore... I say the hand that rocks the cradle should pull the plow. That's what you say. Yes. Friends, it's women who have made history. You said it. Yes. When Romeo drank the poison, who got the nickel back on the bottle? Jack Bennett? No. no. I'm wrong. No. After Julius Caesar was stabbed, who donned up the holes in his sweater? Mm. Mary Livingston. No. I'm wrong again. When Paris gave Helen of Troy a wooden horse, who put two dollars out its nose? Bing Crosby. No. Wrong again. When Napoleon was losing at Waterloo, who was Josephine playing rummy with? Well, who? Who? Oh, don't ask me. Write to your congressman. I say. <laughs> well, what are you trying to prove? That women should run the farm? Well, the least they could do is have scarecrows wear dresses instead of pants. Oh. 
That's a nice compromise. Oh, thanks. I bet it's so exciting. Oh, and it's pretty, too, yeah. <laughs> Say, Gracie, I think you're overlooking a big point. What the farmers need most is water. Bubbles, make a note of that. All right. Have you forgotten what Secretary of Agriculture Wallace said when he addressed the farmers during the drought? Oh, what did he say? Greetings, Gates. Let's irrigate. <laughs> Uh, that's what your hootie keeps telling him down at the office when he ain't neat. So, my friends, I could point out several things that are wrong with farm conditions, but it isn't polite to point. Yes, so you won't. The trouble with farms today is they're overcrowded. Asparagus only has standing room. And mushrooms are living in cellar. Yes. I thought so, yeah. Tracy, my drummer won't be able to let his wife run his farm. Why not? Well, she ran away with a hired man about a week ago. Oh, that's awful. Oh, it's even worse than that, Grace. The hired man is the only one that can run the threshing machine. Well, what's the drummer? What's your drummer going to do about it? Oh, not a thing until he finishes reading Rebecca. Oh, now, please, boys. The farmers are waiting for the finish of my speech. So are we. Friends, the following are a number of things that women will do for the farm. Number one, we'll put a chalk mark in every chicken coop. A Number chalk two. Chalk mark in every chicken coop? So the hen can lay it on the line. Uh, really? Down a wide of them. Say, Gracie, why don't you have milking stools with rumble seats so that the cows can sit down, too? Cows can sit down? <clears throat> Bubbles pull up a chair. <laughs> like that one, Frank? Dodo bird. Dodo bird? Extinct. It did, uh. Um... <laughs> Gracie, your speech. Oh, um, number three. Bustles for farmers' wives. Wait a minute. What's that? Who's that? Oh, that's my drummer who's been reading Rebecca. Oh. And he just found out about his wife running away, huh? Oh, no, no. What's he crying about? Oh, the book has a sad ending. Uh, Grace, say your speech, please. Right. Well, number three, bustles for farmers' wives so that they can be well-dressed and have something to carry the coal in at the same time. What for? Two and two. Oh, I always thought it was three and one. Oh, well, you see. I'm wrong. And in conclusion, my farmer friends, it has always been my custom to leave my audience in a good mood. So, Gracie, 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 what's that? I'm leaving in a good mood. I say, what?
George has been trying to convince Gracie that the public thinks her presidential campaign is silly. So we've got a microphone out in front of the studio, and we're about to interview the man in the street. Now, step back, ladies and gentlemen. Will you step back and give us some room? Thank everybody. You oh, what's your name, mister? And who, me? No, no, you. My name is Benny V. Rubin. Oh, what does the V stand for? Volter. A uh, hot Volta or cold Volta? Oh, please, God. Uh, mister, oh, who do you think will be the next president? Why change? Isn't McKinley doing a good job? <laughs> Volta probably hasn't seen today's paper, Volta. Oh, uh, George, give the gentleman two tickets to Gorman's Chinese and a box of Mars bars. Mm. Gracie, let me ask these questions. Um, Nick, gentlemen, what's your name, mister? Harriet Brown. Um, I'll take care of her, Gracie. Step uh, away, Frank. Her. Miss, I've been trying to prove a point. Have you heard anything about Gracie Allen's campaign for president? Oh, yes, I'm going to vote for her. Oh, George, give the girl two pounds of coffee. Uh, quiet. Um, Miss Brown, do you really think that Gracie Allen has a chance of being elected? Do I? And I bet this girl does, too, don't you, miss? Do I? Oh, I certainly do. Well, this is fine. <laughs> George, give Gracie two pounds of coffee. Quiet, Bubba. <laughs> Say, uh, here's a nice-looking oh, yeah. young man here. Oh, he's pretty hot, too. How do you do? Oh, well, I didn't catch your name, but my name is Gracie Allen. Say, aren't you the girl? Oh, I certainly am. You're not bad yourself. <laughs> Look, uh, Gracie. Joe, where do you live? Uh, in Pasadena, but I... Oh, I'll be glad to, but I have to be home by 12 o'clock. Gracie, let me do the talk. Oh, it's awfully nice of you to say that, mister. George, give the gentleman two pounds of coffee. Uh, mister, are you a Republican or a Democrat? He is. George, take back the coffee. Mm. Gracie, we haven't got any coffee. Say, are you nuts? Yes, and I'm his partner, Gracie Allen. <laughs> Stop rubbing it in. Say, Gracie, Gracie, here's a little boy six years old who knows all about your surprise party. You betcha, and I'm going to vote for you, Gracie. Well, thanks, Sonny. Hey, who's that guy oh, over that's there? Oh, George. Oh, I know. That's your party mascot. The party, uh, the party mascot is a kangaroo. Gee whiz, he talks, too. Oh, oh that's cute. George, give him two pounds of oval tea. I'll give him a hot foot in a minute. Imagine mistaking me for a kangaroo. Well, that's because you've got that cigar stuck in your pouch. <laughs> mm. There must be one intelligent person in this crowd. Coming, coming. I say, Gracie, <laughs> I couldn't get anybody to be interviewed, but I'd be glad to answer any questions. Oh, good. What's your name? Raymond O. Noble. Well, what does the O stand for? Volta. Volta. <laughs> Can you imagine what I stand for? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Noble, where are you from? Oh, the crowd over there. That's the oh. spot, yeah. Well, now, uh, why do you think I'll be the best president? Well, now, that's a coincidence. You know, I asked myself the same thing the other night. <laughs> and uh, what did you answer yourself? Well, I really don't know. Now that I'm an American, it's very difficult for me to understand an English accent, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, give the gentleman two pounds. Two pounds of what? Two pounds of flesh. He can use it. You shut up. <laughs> Step aside, one side there. Just step aside there. This way, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, Gracie, uh, here's a young lady from Erie, Pennsylvania. Her name is Florence Gould. Her phone number is Federal uh, 8388. Uh, and she's going to vote for you, aren't you, honey? And how? <laughs> Come on, baby. I told you I was going to put you on the radio. <laughs> Frank, Frank, where are you going? I'm not to tell you anymore, do I, brother? Oh, go away. Uh, pardon me, Miss Allen. I've noticed you're interviewing a lot of people about your campaign, and I'd like to ask you a few questions. Yes, I would oh, well, all right, but only two at a time. Is your administration going to do away with the New Deal? No, no, I'm going to continue the New Deal. But to make it more exciting, I'm going to have Deuces Wild. <laughs> except, uh, except for pears and flushes. Yes. Yes. How do you feel about the youth movement? Oh, I just love it. Jitterbugging is my favorite stuff. Oh, yes. yes. Are you going to do anything with the SEC, NLRB, WPA, CCC, CIO, or AFL? Oh, no, my good man. I haven't played with blocks since I was a baby. <laughs> Alan, what do you think of the Wagner Act? Oh, well, it's all right, but my favorite act is Olsen and Johnson. <laughs> have you anything to say about Secretary Hull's reciprocal trade agreement? Well, no, but I'd have plenty to say about it if I knew what it was. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look, uh, let me handle this. Mister, uh, would you step up to the microphone, please? Uh, yes, sir. Are you in favor of the supplies party? Well, my wife says I'm a Republican. Would you elect a woman to the presidency? I'll have to ask my wife. 
Well, do you think a woman president would be better than a man president? I've never heard my wife say. Your wife? Haven't you got a mind of your own? Yes, sir. Well, where is it? Standing over there in the blue dress. Oh. <laughs> George, I'll interview his wife. That's a swell idea, Gracie. And say, ask her about Iron Tree, Honey Hay, and Omde Eam Cray. Oh, you? yes. Uh, madam, Madam, I've been admiring your beautiful hands. What makes them so soft and smooth? My husband does all the housework. Oh. <laughs> George, George, give the man two pounds of soap chips and a dish rag. Well, 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 well. Here's a nice looking gentleman. Oh, One of the no, 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 no. You, you. Where were you from? Well, I traveled a lot, Missy. As a matter of fact, I just come from Omaha. Oh, that's where we're holding our surprise party convention. Oh, yes. My niece wrote me all about it. Oh, did she? It's going to be held May 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. That's right. They're running a special Union Pacific train to take the party from Los Angeles to Omaha. Mm-hmm. They're going to have torchlight parades and 25,000 men are raising whiskers. Well, your niece certainly must be a smart girl. She is. And so are her sisters, Bessie, Hazel, and Pearl. Yeah, Bessie, Hazel, and what? Uncle Charlie! Oh, <laughs> and now, Truman Bradley, the Heinz handyman. Gracie wants to send you a copy of her campaign song, Vote for Gracie. Yes, you get the sheet music, complete with the verses and a big picture of Gracie right on the cover, wearing her campaign hat. Now, here's all you have to do to get the song. Just write your name and address clearly on the back of a Heinz Honey and Almond Cream carton and mail it to Gracie Ellen, Hollywood, California. It's okay to send just one Heinz carton in the 25-cent size, the 50-cent size, or the dollar size. But if you use the 10-cent size, be sure to send two cartons. Every time you use Heinz on your hands, Notice how much softer and smoother your skin looks. Isn't it amazing the way Heinz lotion makes chapped rough housework hands look smoother and prettier right away? Of course, it's not amazing in another way, because Heinz is really extra creamy, extra softening, and contains two vitamins, A and D. You expect Heinz to be good? Take good care of your hands with Heinz Honey and Almond Cream and make good use of your Heinz carton. Mail it with your name and address to Gracie Allen, Hollywood, California. And you get in return an actual copy of her campaign song, Vote for Gracie. Remember, one carton in any larger size will do, but if you use the ten-cent size, then send two cartons. Here's the address again. Gracie Allen, Hollywood, California. Thank you, Drew. And now Gracie will sing Pizzicato Porca. Sing it, please. <laughs> The pizzicata polka is the thrill. It stirred me once, I know it all the thrill. They played the polka for as long as long. And since that time, as you must surely know, I do adore you so. Indeed, the dear old polka that we knew affects me still in all the things I do. And so the pizzicata is a sort of obligata to the feeling that I've got to be with you. I'm absolutely certain you'll agree with me completely when I say that life is gay and more romantic day by day because you see the polka drew us closer at the start and helped to make it so we'd never part. My love may be staccato, but it's never moderato with the pizzicato polka in my heart. Is it legato to steal my heart and make me blush like a tomato? If I look blotto, what does it motto when you are so passionato? My love is a crescendo. It will never end, oh. Please pretend all that you care. The pizzicato polka is the thrill. It stirred me once, I know it all the will. They played the polka for as long ago. And though it was in winter, I looked out and there was no more snow. The polka drew a closer at the start and helped to make it so we'd never part. My love may be staccato, but it's never moderato with the pizzicato polka in my heart. Now you can have a choice of two Heinz preparations for your hands. One is the famous Heinz lotion that pours from the bottle. The other is the brand new, grand new Heinz hand cream in jars. Like the famous lotion itself, this new Heinz hand cream helps to give you nice soft hands in spite of housework. It's surprisingly inexpensive, too. Only 10 cents and 39 cents a jar. 
Well, Gracie, say good night. Oh, good night. Oh, and when I'm in Washington, don't forget to drop in for dinner. And if I don't serve the best 60 cent dinner in Washington, may I never see a third turn. Good night, all. <laughs> George and Gracie and all of us will be back again next Wednesday at this same time. Join us, will you? This is Truman Bradley saying good night for Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>